When setting up to use Red Out, uh, we recommend several things. First and foremost, we definitely want to be wearing gloves and eyewear. Um, the gloves, because the chemical, while it's not a caustic chemical, it does kind of cause some skin irritation. So using gloves to kind of keep the product off of your hands is definitely going to make your life easier. Uh, we recommend cutting in and using a paint tray or a bucket. The reason for that is the product needs to be agitated. So when you get down into the bottom of the tray, you can use your roller or into the bottom of the bucket, use your roller to kind of agitate the product, keeping it mixed together, which is going to allow you for better results. When it gets to your edges, we recommend something like a foam tool or a cutting pad. And then after we roll out the product using a 3 8 inch roller, we're going to come behind it with a cutting pad or a T-bar to even it out, similar to the process that we would use when water popping a floor and evening out the amount of water on the floor. All right, when uh, working with these products, we definitely want to shake them. So we're going to shake them pretty aggressively. Um, the reason that we really want to shake number one is that it's actually got two different liquids in it. And so the two different liquids, we want to make sure that they stay mixed together because that's actually what's going to give us our reaction. So after shaking it for 10, 15, 20 seconds, we're going to pour it out. And when we pour it out, it's actually going to be a milky white. Now this product, you're going to want to continue to agitate as we're putting it down on the floor. Now obviously you're going to be working on a much bigger surface than something like this. Um, so as you're going across the house, uh, definitely keep on agitating this inside of the jug and also inside of your tray or bucket. Once we have the roller loaded, we will come onto our surface. The biggest thing to note is that if you push too hard with the roller, you will get some splash that comes out. We definitely don't want to do that. So we're just lightly rolling with the roller, being very careful of our edges. This is where a cut-in tool would help. If you don't have a cut-in tool, you can actually come up along the wall with the roller and then just gently cover the area. We're not trying to flood the floor. We're only trying to make sure that the surfaces are coated. As we roll out across the floor, there are going to be some inconsistencies. You can already kind of see that where I first started is darker than where I'm coating right now. That's okay. We don't have to worry about something like that. You can cross grain as well as going with the grain. We don't need to push very hard. Like I said, all we're trying to do is make sure that the areas get coated. And you can instantly see the areas that are coated versus not, as they're going to go dark pretty quickly. And I still have a lot of product in my applicator right now. So I could definitely get another 10, 15 feet off of what I've just got off my roller. The next biggest thing is that after we roll out a section, we want to come back in and we want to come back with either a T-bar or a cutting pad to even out the areas. This is going to help your process in the fact that we're going to take any areas that are maybe a little bit heavier and even them out with some of the areas that are a little bit lighter, which is going to allow our drying to happen at a much more even rate. So after working that in, smooth it out maybe just a little bit more. Now what we're going to do is we're going to let this dry for about 10 to 15 minutes. What we're looking for is it to be either this brown with no shiny uh, parts on the surface showing that there's any kind of standing puddles or it will actually kind of fade a little bit to kind of a gray. What we don't want is to let this product dry for too long because we need a reaction with part two, um, step two to happen while it's still available, still damp. Uh, if we let it dry too much, we actually have to come back in with more of step one and re-wet the floor basically. So uh, we're gonna let this dry and then we're going to uh, come back in about 10, 15 minutes 
We don't want to put a fan on it. We don't want to try and accelerate the drying. Let it happen naturally, and then we'll uh, take the red out. All right, we're getting ready for step two. This is kind of what we're looking for on the floor. There is going to be some grays faded from the brown. What we don't see is the any shiny spots, which is, means that the floor is no longer has any standing uh, surface puddles, and we're ready to go. Take step two. We're going to shake it up really well. Now, when we pour this out, you'll notice a visible difference from step one, as in it's going to be just a clear liquid. Now, we're using a different roller here than we did in step one. We want to make sure that we keep them separate. We're going to load our roller. And then as soon as we come across the floor, we're going to start to see a change as the products are interacting with each other. We'll go along here so we can go along the wall. Just to really highlight the difference. Now, obviously, you wouldn't want to necessarily not do your areas next side by side, but to really just kind of highlight the difference of what we're going to see when we start applying this product is it's immediately going to start working on that brown color in the wood and it's going to start taking it away. We want to be working with the grain, cross graining, either one of those is effective. Any heavy areas like this where you're a little bit worried, you can always kind of work a little bit more and that process really kind of takes care of those lines. So once again, anything like this, we can either hit it a little bit harder, but what will happen is those lines will absolutely fade over time because the product has just been working in this section a little bit longer than it's been working in that section. After we roll it out, same thing as we did with step one, we're going to want to come back. with the cutting pad. And we're gonna wanna even those areas out. Just trying to allow the product to be even across the floor. We can already see a lot of those hard lines are fading. And what we're gonna do is just sit back, let this dry overnight. So in the event that you need to push this situation and you need to speed up this process or if you need to do a second application, you're gonna wanna come in with a pinless moisture meter and you're gonna wanna take readings across the floor, get your average, whatever your average is, as long as every area that you measured after you do this process is, is within 1%, uh, you're gonna be able to coat um, again and do a second application or you can start your coating process with either a stain, sealer, or finish.